Salvation Army Ministry. Okay. Um, they live tomorrow. No, it's a July 20th. Okay. And um, yeah, and on July 27th, it will be communion service at the church. Okay, and now we move on with the song service.
You know, that's a true praise song. Amen. Amen. It's, we're singing directly to the Lord God. It's not, we're not singing about him. It says, oh Lord, my God, when I am wasom wondered, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. It's a praise song because we're singing directly to the Lord. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and uh, let's try another song. This one is not, strictly speaking, a praise song, but it's number 185. 185, Jesus is all the world to me. Here we're talking about Jesus in the third person, right? And so we're not directing our song directly to him. So it's not strictly speaking a praise song, but it's a wonderful, wonderful telling about our experience. Jesus is all the world to me. My life Let's turn to number 111, 111. It took a miracle, did it not? <laughs> it took a miracle. Let's just sing first and last verse. Yeah. 
to bring the world in space. But when he said, my soul cleansed and made me whole, it took the miracle of love and grace. Amen. Amen. Shall we all stand and turn to number 10? One zero. Oh, come, Christians, come to join to sing. <laughs> Shall we join to sing? Amen. Number 10. standing, turn to your neighbor and say hello, shall we? This is a good day to be in the house of the Lord. <laughs> and I invite you to come up front when you get a chance. We come up front and pray together. <laughs> or we can pray at our seats too but you're welcome to come forward and we shall pray together Lord God, we thank you for blessing us with this beautiful Sabbath morning. God, we thank you. We praise you for getting us through another week. Lord, you're such a good God, and we are just counting ourselves so blessed to call ourselves your children this morning. Lord God, I know, as you know, Lord, there are some burdens on some hearts today, Lord, so I ask that you would be with every request on every heart. Lord, be with those that have come forward this morning. Lord, whether it's to send you up a praise or to send you up a request, Lord God, be with those that are sick. Those that are suffering, Lord Jesus, we reached out to them. There are 
uh, brothers and sisters that want to be here this morning, but for some reason they can't, God. We ask that your Holy Spirit rest on them. May your hand of peace and comfort be upon them, Lord. Be with every situation, Lord, represented here by those that have come forward. Lord, work out your will in every life. Where there's a need, we ask that you provide, Lord God. Where there is some sort of um, disruption in life, Lord, some sort of stress, some kind of anxiety, Lord, we claim your peace that passes understanding, Lord Jesus. We claim that peace. And Lord, may we go from this place reassured, knowing that if we ask, you will answer, Lord Jesus. If we knock, you're going to open, Lord God. And until then, Lord, we claim your patience, we claim your peace, and we're just going to praise you no matter what, Lord Jesus. So God, thank you for this church. Thank you for the church family. Thank you for being such a good and awesome father. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Kids can come forward and help collect the lamb's offering. The offering goes, Christmas become as a little child, as a little child that comes unto him. Yes, you must become as a little child. Good morning. Morning, church. How many of us are kids today? Oh, yeah. You don't have to be this tall to be a kid, right? 
I like to think it. Am I old? No, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. I have a grandbaby. She's three years old. Can you believe that? I'm a grandpa. You know what she calls me? Ducky. I don't know if it's the way I walk. But that's okay. I don't mind. Because I like to tell her stories, and I get a lot of my stories from my grandpa and from my dad. And one of the stories that I'm going to tell you right now is about when my dad was your age. Now, first of all, let's set the scene, okay? We have to set the scene. Way up here in Michigan, how many of you have been way down south in Florida? Have you visited Florida? Okay, all right. It's hot. Oh, it's so hot down there. I just came from Florida a couple of weeks ago. We were camping in Florida in July. Don't recommend it. Don't recommend it. But I'll tell you one thing that is pretty good in Florida is fishing. Anybody like to fish? Anybody? You know, God said that he'll make us fishers of men, right? Fishers of humanity. That's okay. It's okay if you're the traditional kind of fisherman, fisher person. My dad loves to fish. He loves to fish. You can get him out on the water and you can't get him back off, okay? He'll hardly bring the boat in. And when he was a kid, he was with his dad, my grandpa, whom I did not call Ducky, okay? My grandpa and my dad went fishing in Florida. And they've got some really big lakes there. They've got the Everglades. It's kind of swampy. But he was fishing on one of their lakes. And his dad was fishing just right, not too far away from him, right? They were, they were a little bit closer. And they were both casting out their lines. They were bobber fishing, you know, where you put the bobber, yeah, on your line. And it floats and you watch your bobber. And if your bobber wiggles, then you know that you might have something on your line. And if the bobber goes under really quick, then what do you do? You pull back, you pull back, and you reel to get the fish in, right? Because you know that there's a fish, or there may be a fish on the hook. And my grandpa, my dad's dad, was catching fish. And my dad was not catching fish, and he started to think, well, maybe it's because he's catching all the fish, and I'm not getting any. And so, so he said, Dad, I'm going to go down here. I see a spot over here. I want to try over there. And he said, all right, go along. And so my dad took his fishing pole and some bait with him, and he went a little bit further down the shore of this great big lake in which they were fishing. And he cast his line out there, and he waited, and he waited, and he watched, and he watched, and he waited some more. And his eye, he felt like his eyes were starting to cross. Okay, I'm making this part up. But I could just feel this, you know, I'm standing there with him when he's telling me this story, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I would be so sick of waiting. And he was, he was getting kind of bored, and then, and this is the wonderful thing about fishing, nothing happens, and then something happens. And he saw his bobber wiggle just a little bit, and he went, oh, And so now his eyes were riveted on the bobber way out in the middle of this giant lake. And then he saw the bobber do something that he was not expecting a bobber to do. You know, usually we expect the bobber to wiggle just a little bit. And then we expect the bobber to just go down real fast, right? That's not what happened. He saw his bobber go very slowly down into the water. Just like it was sinking down into the water. And he thought, why is the bobber going slow? And then his line got tight. 
And then his fishing pole started to bend, and he started to pull back, except that when he pulled, he couldn't go back. It was so strong. Whatever was on the other end of the line was stronger than him. And it started to pull him towards the water, and his fishing pole was bent almost in half. And he thought, what do I do? And he went, Dad, but his dad was too far away. And he thought, wait a minute, I know what I'll do. I'll press the button that will release the line, and then it won't pull me into the water. Sounds like a great idea. So he pushes the button, and the line releases. And he's like, oh, whew. And he's sitting there thinking, you know, I wonder what's going to happen. Oh, wait a minute. My line is slowly unraveling, and eventually it's going to run out. And he thought, what will happen when my line runs out? I mean, at the very best, I'll lose my line and my bobber. I'll lose whatever's on the other end. And at the very worst, if my line is wrapped tightly enough around my reel, then what's going to happen? It's either going to pull my rod into the water, and then I lose my bobber, my bait, my line, and my fishing pole, or I can just hang on to it, and then it pulls me into the water with it, and I don't think I want to be with whatever's in there, and he was at This was a dilemma. He didn't want to lose everything that was important to him, but he didn't want to be pulled into the water with it. And his dad was too far away. He couldn't help. And so he started to look around. He started to look around. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And then he saw a tree. It was just a little tree. Not a big tree, but it was a strong tree, he could tell. And he thought, if I can get to that tree before I run out of line, I might be able to wrap my line around the tree, and it will hold and not be pulled into the water. And so he ran over to the tree, and he began to wrap his fishing line around the tree, And just as he made the last wrap around the tree, his line was out. And then he watched as whatever was out there far out in the water, whatever had pulled his bobber slowly down, whatever was too strong for him to be able to pull back into shore, began to pull that line tighter and tighter And this little tree sapling began to bend. It was pulling so hard on the tree, and he thought, will the tree hold? Will the tree hold? And as he was watching out in the water, and as he was watching that tree, he looked back out and he saw out where his bobber should be, something began to rise up out of the water. Do you know what it was? What? An alligator? Close. Was it a shark? It wasn't a shark. It wasn't a crocodile. It was a turtle, a giant sea turtle, and his head raised up out of the water. And the turtle looked at my dad, and my dad looked at the turtle, and it was as if the turtle said, nope. And he took his head like this, and he went, 
snap. And dad said that his fishing line busted and made the sound of a cannon boom. It got louder every time he told it. (laughs) And the tree went straight back up. And he still had his fishing pole. And he still had his line. And the turtle, all he got away with was a hook and a bobber. And somewhere out in that lake, somewhere, somehow, I want to believe that there's still a turtle with my dad's bobber and hook in his mouth. So if you ever go fishing in Florida, maybe you'll see him. Maybe you can bring him in. But let me tell you something that I learned from that story. I learned that there are times when I'm standing beside this great lake of life. And my line is in the water. I don't know what's going to grab that line. I'm hoping that it will be something that I can bring in. But sometimes, sometimes when our line is in that water, Satan will take hold of that line and he'll try to pull us into the water with him. And he, if he can't get us, he'll take everything that's important to us. He'll take our hook, line, and sinker. I am so thankful that when I feel that pull towards the great lake of life, where I think that it's going to pull me in and pull me under, that I have a tree that I can wrap my line around. Do you know who that tree is? It's God. It's Jesus. And Jesus stands beside the shore of our life ready for us to put our trust in Him. So that when the devil pulls on our line and he tries to take us and everything that's important to us in with him, that tree will stand and it will pull back. And if you keep your faith wrapped around Jesus, eventually that line will break like the sound of a cannon. And you will be free from that temptation. Amen. Aren't you glad that we have Jesus? Yeah. You look like you have something that you really want to say. What is it? How big are we talking turtle? How big a turtle was it? You know, if you ask a fisherman that question, it started out this big and it got to be this big. You never know how big a turtle you're going to catch. You never know. Would you like to bow your heads and ask that Jesus stand beside us so that we can wrap our faith around him? Let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you so very much for sending us your son, Emmanuel, to let us know that you did not abandon us, but that you are with us. You are with us today, and we can wrap our hearts and our lives and our faith around you, and you will stand strong so that we will not lose what we love, that we will not lose our souls. We pray in faith through Jesus now that you remind us that you are there always waiting by our side for us to turn to you and trust you with the lines of our lives. And we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so very much. You may go back to your seats. Thank you very much, brother. It was a very good sermon. I can do benediction and we all can go home.
No, I'm just kidding. This was just a children's story. Um, well, now it's a time for the, as a part of the service for the tithes and offerings. And today's loose uh, um, offerings are going to go to Gen Conference session. Uh, it calls Digital Strategy Mission. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but um, I'm pretty sure there's things called Google and we can find out exactly what it is. So, um, those offerings are going to go to that. Also, do not forget uh, to properly mark your tie envelopes so you can designate uh, the different uh, subsidy to different uh, uh, funds and operations. Um, uh, we also have an insert in the bulletin where everything goes. Don't forget to uh, uh, put some uh, uh, finances into the uh, church operating funds. Everyone see that big hole by the church and big cone on it. You probably see it needs to be repaired and so on. So I can go on with that. So don't forget that um, uh, we need some finances to operate and keep the lights on. Uh, and so make sure you properly uh, mark your uh, tie envelopes, okay? And before I ask uh, deacons wait upon us, um, let's bow our heads uh, and pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for everything that you uh, bless us with. Lord, and as we return our tithes and giving offerings, we're asking that you will multiply it and bless it and put it into the right use according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I want to ask deacons to wait upon us.